Immigration is important to me and it's in my heart because US, America is great because of immigrants. We enrich the culture. We are here because this is our country and we make it better. We contribute to this country. In fact, every single one of you, and I mean the students, just the fact that you're here today, you're a hero because you're in school, because you're pursuing your dreams. I wish somebody would have told me when my family and I were struggling and trying to survive when we came to this country, stay in school, don't stop. Nobody did. And while, while we were trying to survive and put some food on the table, I dropped out of high school. Don't make that mistake. That is the first lesson that I can share with you. If you get something out of today, please don't stop educating yourself, going to school, learning what you can do. That is important. U.S. is a land for immigrants. A lot of here, the people here are immigrants. Our parents are immigrants. I was born and raised in Mexico. Heck, our president's two wives are immigrants. You guys know that, right? They're immigrants. This is our country. And I think we should be proud of the enrichness of the culture. Steve Jobs' father was an immigrant. The co-founder of Google was an immigrant. Yes, Google. Einstein was an immigrant. And this astronaut, Jose Hernandez, from Michoacán, Mexico, where I was born, his parents were immigrants. Aren't we proud? These are the people that make America great. These are the people that are enriching our lives, that make all of us better as well. And we are part of that. I felt the pain of immigration. That's my brother-in-law, my sister's husband. That's my nephew, Hector. He was married to my sister, who was already a US citizen. My nephews were born here in the US. He ended up being deported. My nephews have grown without a father for such a long time. It is unacceptable. And I don't mean that criminals should stay in the country, absolutely not. But the reason changes in immigration are inhumane. They shouldn't be. Something that is also touching my heart is every day I'm reporting on cases on people that are not talking about crimes because fear. 25% the crime has gone down in LA. Wow, that's great news. Well, it's not. What's actually happening is that people are fearful to report a crime out of fear of deportation. That's what's actually going on. Women are getting raped. They're quiet about it. Kids are getting abused. Nobody's saying anything. There's a lot of injustices going on, not just in LA, every single place. They're not being reported out of fear of deportation. I was here in Chicago, in Telemundo, and um, we covered a story where there were three adult men from different countries. I cannot remember the countries that they were different from. They called because they wanted to report a crime, which was sexual harassment, on all of them, by the owner of the company that they worked for. They had the responsibility to care for the family, and they were being victims of sexual harassment. And they did not want to report the crime because they were afraid, but most of all, they were ashamed of what they were going through. These are things that are not fair, that we need to stand up, that we need to speak up, that we need to make sure that we bring them to light so people know that these people who are not criminals, who are here earning, making a life, and making America great are not going through this situation. I ended up going to their house and I found three men with tears in their eyes, ashamed of themselves, not being able to speak to me and look at me in the eyes because they were fearful that I, a reporter, will be called about their situation and call immigration on them. Now, having said this, brings me to this subject, freedom of the press, the importance 
of the media, the importance to speak up. How crucial it is for every single one of us see, sitting here and hearing about this to do something about it. Freedom of the press is crucial. And the reason for that is because without it, there is no accountability. Without transparency, there cannot be justice. Now, I'm a journalist, and I'm going to tell you why I became a journalist. You see that picture? That's a mountain, a little bit of a little mountain where uh, the transmitter of the radio station that I was working at when I came to the U.S. I was about 15, 16 years old that I had gotten my first job as a radio host and um, still undocumented, by the way. And I was working at a, fact, at a radio station like that one. It was dark every night because I would start working at midnight and I would get up at 5 in the morning. In the day, I would work at the factory. In the afternoon, I would try to go to high school and learn English. So that image shows you a place where everything was clear to me. How many of you know what you want to do? Like perfectly, that you have it very figured out. Okay. How many of you don't know and have no clue? Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. I was there. Okay. That's good. I was 16, maybe. Can remember. I was exhausted every night. I was tired because I was working too much and I was trying to finish high school. I was trying to learn language and I was trying to make money at the factory. So I would fall asleep every night, play the music, fall asleep again, play the music. I was alone. It was a place without exaggerating this big, two meters by two meters. That's what I would do every night, my presentation on the radio. Every single night the phone was ringing, but I would not have the energy to pick it up. I did not want to talk to anyone. I was depressed. Finally, one night, I decided I'll pick it up. The, the line kept ringing and ringing and ringing. I said, okay, God damn it, let's do this. Fine. Let me see who it is. While I'm going through my own frustration as a teenager and trying to figure out my own life as a new immigrant here in the U.S., finally picked up the line. And there was a voice on the other end of a woman who said, you finally picked it up. I've been calling you nonstop every night for the past month. My name is so-and-so. I'm 25 years old. I'm pregnant. I'm eight months pregnant. And she was crying. So that's when she got my attention. You're the only person that I listen to every night. You're the only friend that I have here. I fear for my life because my husband hits me. And I don't know what to do. You're the only person that I listen to. That pivotal moment is what this made me decide that the press, this microphone right here in front of me, this monitor right there, my newscast is crucial. It's not a privilege. It's not a gift. It's not an entitlement. It's a responsibility. The responsibility to inform, to give facts, to be truthful, to speak up, to stand up, to rise up when you see an injustice, when you don't see transparency. After that, I decided to do what I do now, to be a voice for those that cannot have a voice. That image right there killed seven people this year in the Washington, D.C. area. Two of them were two minors, one nine years, nine year old, another one was seven years old. Univision Washington, my team, we covered the story nonstop, every day. The people that lived in this building did not know how to speak English. They had been reporting constantly gas leaks for months. Nobody listened to them. The building crashed, exploded because of a negligence, because no one spoke up, nobody said anything, nobody paid attention to it. So thanks to the efforts of Univision Washington, and this is the reason that I feel proud of what we do. That's the reason that you should feel proud every single time you stand up, you rise up, and you speak up. 
Because of that coverage, nobody had done anything. Nobody spoke English, so they could not even be interviewed about what happened. We were able to bring light to this darkness, and now there is an investigation and a lawsuit that hopefully will bring some justice to all those families that were affected by this explosion at the Flower Branch Apartments in Washington, D.C. We have to take control over what we do. I'm a journalist. Yes, I'm a news anchor. I host a national show on politics. I ask questions. Some of them don't, don't get answered. I have to be honest with you. Sometimes I don't like saying the truth because the truth is there, but I have to say the truth, even if I don't like it. That's my job. I want you guys to do the same job. You don't have to be in front of a camera because you have a phone. You have a, a camera. You have a microphone when you speak to your friends. You have the power to put the light where the injustices are happening. And you can be your own reporters. So I ask you to do that. 